So good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to this uh, virtual kickoff of our Development Policy Research Month, or DPM. And uh, thank you for your interest. Uh, I've seen uh, some uh, uh, participants from the NEDA regional offices, and uh, one NRO actually greeted me. So I'm glad that uh, you're here and uh, you're interested uh, in uh, our celebration of the Policy Research Month, ang buwan ng pananaliksik. So our, our theme is Reset and Rebuild for a Better Philippines in the Post-Pandemic World. And uh, uh, the theme of the DPRM, uh, next slide uh, please, Wang, uh, is also the theme of our upcoming Annual Public Policy Conference or APPC on September 14, 16, 21, and 23. As uh, already mentioned by uh, uh, Sheila, uh, so we are the members of the Scientific Committee, myself, Dr. Magid uh, Gonzalez, and uh, Dr. Chris uh, Francisco. So let me give you some preliminaries. Uh, next slide. Given the huge uncertainty on how and when the coronavirus disease uh, 2019 or COVID-19 pandemic will end, the question of uh, whether there will be a post-pandemic world has arisen. So note that uh, the only infectious disease that has been eradicated in the history of humankind is smallpox. Then the end of the 1918 uh, flu pandemic came when much of the world's geographic areas achieved herd immunity through natural infection, and that was sometime in the middle of 1920. Uh, so large-scale immunization is now being pushed to fast-track the attainment of uh, herd immunity or yung concept na uh, the point when there are enough people with antibodies that the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus is unable to successfully find enough hosts that will transmit it. Then governments are hoping that uh, we could achieve uh, herd immunity through unavoidable natural infection and the uh, deliberately scaled up uh, vaccination across the globe. But the highly transmissible Delta variant and still ongoing mutations of the virus changed that. So rather than herd immunity in the medium term, we, uh, the PIDS uh, Scientific Committee, are looking at the post-pandemic world both based on current knowledge as a future where the virus is under control. So Hindi in the herd immunity in the medium term, no? but the uh, uh, control of the virus. So it's under control because in most parts of the world, countries are able to suppress, suppress, uh, suppress the spread of the virus through a combination of vaccination, treatment, prevention, good public policies, and individuals knowing how to live with the virus. Next slide. Now equipped with the assessment that the pandemic will eventually end, Yung ating policymakers can begin to think ahead and assess scenarios of possible futures. Possible uh, post-COVID-19 scenarios have uh, already been explored by various authors and uh, some results are, are presented here. So let me first discuss uh, five scenarios based on uh, varying levels of uh, globalization and collaboration. So we have a responsible globalization, an interconnected world where um, valuing society, sustainable development, and protection of human life are shared principles of the global community. And then uh, we can have a chaotic globalization, a world in which uh, inequalities increase significantly. No, There's opportunism, there's growing rivalry. And we can also have a world of walls scenario, no? a fractured world. There's an upsurge in nationalist values, protectionism, and so on. And conflicts grow substantially. Then international institutions uh, lose their legitimacy. We could also have cold peace scenario, highly polarized world. There are two opposing blocs, no? China and EU and the US uh, on the other end. Uh, each remains politically stable and grows economically, but uh, global collaborative efforts collapse and and the fifth scenario is uh, uh, an adaptive mosaic scenario or a localized world focused on uh, sustainability where countries collaborate across borders, but uh, resilience and self-sufficiency are emphasized and uh, will reduce uh, dependence on uh, global markets and uh, supply chains. Okay, next slide. Another uh, scenario building uh, based on adaptation and learning um, is this, no? Uh, we have 
uh, particularly particularly retreat or a business as usual scenario, uh, and it promotes uh, taking refuge in the in the nation state, in the government, and this regards the global interrelatedness of COVID-19 issues and uh, ignores existing uh, interdependencies. Or we could have adaptation scenario wherein the state, the market, and civil society communicate and adjust to complexities. So they learn, you know, and multilateralism are at the international is uh, strengthened. And uh, states invest in public health and markets uh, deepen uh, cooperation. Um, civil society promotes a responsible consumption, uh, subsidiarity, self-care, and sustainable uh, development. Another scenario is uh, what's called collective uh, learning scenario. So this is the most demanding among the three scenarios. And uh, there is global governance on uh, concerns like public goods, risk reduction, and catastrophe prevention. Um, governments uh, prioritize uh, public policies around the notion of care and reducing inequalities. Markets uh, prioritize uh, short distance logistics and localization of production and consumption, and uh, also essential activities. And uh, we evolve into what's called uh, prosumers. No? We produce and consume uh, main, many goods and services uh, locally. Next slide. In another scenario building, one that emphasizes that uh, we live in an equal world where achieving the SDGs may be more feasible for some countries than for others, business as usual is predicted to happen if the civil society is weak and the critical voices and social demands are not consolidated. So this is uh, the most pessimistic view, the business as usual scenario. and. Uh, it posits that there will be no major changes. Uh, the recovery will be uh, based on tried and tested uh, consumerism uh, uh, based uh, capitalist system similar to uh, the aftermath of the 2008 uh, financial crisis. But uh, there can be alternative uh, scenarios if critical voices and social demands are consolidated post pandemic. Uh, the first alternative is uh, what's called paradigm shift, uh, where, which is associated with a chaotic situation. So the chaos will uh, bring in the paradigm shift, where uh, COVID-19 causes the global economic order to fall apart and uh, puts the environmental and climate crisis at the center of the need for recovery. A less uh, radical scenario is a planned or managed transition. And here, the pandemic is the trigger for calls similar to the Green New Deal. The Green New Deal is uh, already being uh, proposed by um, developed countries. And that's uh, so that we can attain sustainable development. So in this managed transition, a gradual process of change uh, takes place in the short and medium term in the areas of uh, sustainable consumption, reduction of the economy in scale, circular economy, green economy, and blue economy. Okay, next slide. So in this context, we need to work toward a better Philippines in a post-pandemic world. So the theme of our, next slide please, of our DPRM and APPC um, invokes the following actions, reset, rebuild, and uh, imagining a better Philippines. So reset meaning to clear errors, remove problematic uh, applications, or put away things that entangle. Rebuild meaning to make extensive changes, demolish obsolete rules, processes, and systems, and provide new ones. And the theme also invites us to imagine a better Philippines, and it encourages us to enable a more effective functioning of our systems and processes. Next slide. Our theme is also attuned to global developments and has a main theme, resetting capitalism, and three sub-themes, namely stakeholder capitalism, green and inclusive recovery, and robust and healthy workforce. Next slide. In the scenario building exercises of uh, various authors, a subtle criticism of capitalism runs as an uh, undercurrent in the assessments of uh, globalization, international order, market, sustainable development, and inequality. So pondering about the future, 
has uh, compelled thinkers to explore what the current flaws of the capitalist system are and how this can be fixed. Particularly, the World Economic Forum uh, recommended a so-called Great Reset. WEF founder uh, Schwab argued that we need a Great Reset of uh, capitalism given that the long-term consequences of COVID-19 will exacerbate the ongoing climate and social crisis. Okay, so next slide. So that's our uh, main theme for uh, the uh, first uh, uh, webinar in our APPC. And the questions that uh, we must answer is, how must we reset our ways of life and rebuild toward a better normal? How can we build new foundations for the world's economic and social systems? How can we steer the market towards fairer outcomes? And how can we ensure that investments advance shared goals such as equality and sustainability? Next slide. Now, uh, our first sub-theme, ethical bus business, uh, uh, tells us that uh, it is uh, opportune to revisit how businesses can be profitable and ethical at the same time. So the relevant question is uh, which economic system would best serve us today? shareholder capitalism or stakeholder capitalism when we speak of shareholder capitalism uh, we this means that the interests of only one stakeholder the owner dominate and the goal is to maximize maximize profits and share shareholder value whereas a stakeholder capitalism this means uh, that um, all stakeholders are considered, their, all of their interests are considered, so including the interests of employees, customers, and suppliers. And the focus is on long-term value creation. Okay, next slide. And uh, that uh, um, thinking is uh, actually uh, gaining traction in the U.S., uh, in developing Asia, and uh, even in the Philippines, uh, like in late 2020, the Philippine Business Group uh, signed a what's called Covenant for Shared uh, Prosperity. And the Philippine Securities and Exchange Commission has already supported elements of uh, stakeholder capitalism, and it's now enshrined in the Code of uh, Corporate Governance, which took effect in 2017. Okay, next slide. So the relevant... Uh, uh, questions uh, under this sub theme is so uh, will a stakeholder model uh, foster or hinder corporate econ or economic growth in a post COVID environment? What kinds of trade offs can be expected? How willing are businesses to follow a stakeholder model? Will they be inclined to adopt a universally accepted uh, um, environmental, social, and governance or ESG met metrics? which are designed to help achieve the SDGs. By the way, uh, try to look at some um, Philippine companies in the energy sector, and they are starting to adopt uh, ESG metrics, uh, uh, it, it, as you will be able to see in their websites. You know, they're starting to adopt ESG metrics. Uh, another relevant question is, what will be the effect on firms on financial markets? And on the latter, do we have an investor base that is cognizant of the long-term benefits of a sustainability or a stakeholder mindset among firms? And should stakeholder principles be further enshrined in co corporate governance laws? So ano pa yung kulang? And then what are the pros and cons of codification? What have been the good, bad outcomes of the recent changes in the corporate governance code? Okay, next slide. The second sub-theme, is on green and inclusive um, recovery. And this is uh, because uh, there's gr uh, evidence that uh, increasing pressure on the human, uh, increasing human pressure on the natural environment uh, may drive disease emergence. That's uh, one important lesson uh, from the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And also part of the lessons from the uh, continuing research on inf infectious diseases is the need to regulate human activities in the natural environment and therefore building green and blue economy uh, resilience must be emphasized. Okay, next slide. And uh, in uh, building uh, resilience, uh, this uh, entails uh, conservation of uh, green and blue ecosystems as well as 
climate change adaptation and uh, mitigation. No? And um, uh, we need to uh, look at climate targets and well-being targets as uh, complementary. And this are, has uh, implications for food security, energy and use, waste management, conservation of uh, ecosystems, and preparing for climate change. Our, uh, the relevant questions, next slide, uh, in this sub-theme are as follows. So who are the crucial stakeholders? In what areas of green and blue economy can PPPs uh, flourish? What are the trade-offs? In which sectors are the trade-offs prominent? How accessible are innovations, especially for developing countries such as uh, the Philippines? And what is uh, the extent of our capacity to uh, research and develop solutions on our own? And, and the next slide. And then our last uh, topic uh, for um, the conference is, uh, and for the uh, overall celebration of our Development Policy Research Month is robust and healthy workforce. And this is because uh, COVID-19 highlighted existing health inequities traced by low compensation workers as they are more likely to encounter poor work-related conditions. As uh, you can see from this slide, the uh, conditions they are exposed in. Next slide. And we also emphasize that uh, while digitalization and the fourth industrial revolution have facilitated the transition to remote work, and also distance learning, there are differences in the ability to access uh, technologies and that exacerbate existing inequalities. Next slide. So the relevant questions uh, here are as follows. What needs to be fixed in social protection systems? How has digital technology been used to cope with the impacts of COVID? And what are uh, good uh, models around the world that we can emulate? Then what is the future of training and reskilling? And what should the new and better normal in, this, uh, in, in the areas of uh, labor, employment, and reskilling should look like? Okay, next slide. So in closing, let me highlight that in thinking about the post-pandemic world, the epidemiological path of COVID-19 in the world and in the Philippines and the track of recovery programs of the Philippine government as they evolve up to this time should be used as baseline scenario in our assessments. We invite you all to think of possible futures and reimagine a better Philippines post-pandemic given such baseline. And more importantly, our ideas of what kinds of resetting and rebuilding will be necessary. Thank you for your attention. Stay safe always and let us learn to live with the virus.